And we're on to the second game in this exploration of the career of Elki. And this is going to be a game between Elki and Gur. And as I uh, suggested earlier on in the intro and in the uh, first commentary, this is, this is going to be a fairly special game because these two players are probably the most successful foreigners ever to play StarCraft in Korea. Uh, Gur probably the more successful of the two. He won a Star League early on and uh, had, had some other successes. Uh, Elki a, a little bit less successful, but uh, came in fourth, fifth. Uh, had 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 some successes here and there. Uh, this this is a slightly longer game than the last game between uh, Elki and Boxer, so uh, we'll have a little bit of time to to talk about the uh, records of the players in more detail. Uh, Gur is uh, Guillaume Patry, a uh, French-Canadian player who uh, started StarCraft uh, very early on after its inception and actually won the uh, Hanaro Tongshin on Game Net Star League OSL in the year 2000. So, nine whole years ago, uh, about two years after StarCraft uh, came into existence. Um, Holds a career winning record of 50.63%, 40 and 39 uh, in at least uh, Korean televised matches. And uh, fairly, uh, fairly consistent across most of his matches, but it seems like his specialty was uh, in PVZ. Um, in PVT, uh, about 43% actually, so a little, a little bit below par, 10 and 13. But uh, overall, uh, quite a, a solid player. I think he has some stats don't quite add up, so I think he must have had some games against random. Uh, but he uh, took a silver in the 2002 Star League uh, and a bronze in the 2001 Star League. So, uh, some relatively long-term consistency. Um, and eventually he, he retired. Uh, he hasn't been playing for quite a while, but uh, he's uh, he's certainly sort of set the gold standard for foreigners having success in creating Star League scene. As you can see here, he's the uh, orange Protoss player putting down his uh, gateway and gas, going for what seems like a standard tech build. Uh, and the map here is Legacy of Char, which is not a map that I've seen any games played on before. So uh, we'll see how it uh, how it plays out. I'll I'll be sort of figuring out the map as the commentary goes along. But you can see that there's sort of that long, uh, twisty, circular path leading into the main uh, four spawn points on this map. And uh, you can see that Gur has already sent out a scouting probe. Uh, Elki just sending out a scouting SCV now. It looks like, and they might pass en route. Uh, might see each other. No, it doesn't look like they're going to. Uh, Oh, and the game's being paused. I'm not sure why that is. But in any event, uh, there's there have been a couple documentaries done about professional StarCraft, and one of them has a fairly lengthy, uh, relatively speaking, fe feature on Gur, and uh, does an interview with him and talks about his life post-StarCraft, living in Korea, and trying to make a living as a... Uh, former professional gamer. Uh, I'm not sure, I'll try to include the link in uh, the video description. Um, I probably won't remember to, so remind me and I'll, I'll hunt it down and post it, but it's, uh, it's already interesting. I think it's like National Geographic or something that uh, did the profile, but uh, very interesting video anyhow. Uh, not sure what's uh, led to the game being paused. Um, this is sort of, uh, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is the part of the game that's inscrutable to non-Koreans. Uh, commentating a recent game earlier, uh, maybe just a couple days ago, where there was another sort of random three or four minute pause. Um, and hopefully the action will uh, move on relatively quickly. Uh, someone's in uh, Gur's booth talking to him there. Uh, and Elki uh, breathing onto his hands, uh, 
looking impassive behind his uh, dark, shiny glasses. Um, yeah, if this, uh, if this goes too long, I'll just uh, cut it off and, and skip past it in the uh, actual video when I put it online. But hopefully they'll get started relatively soon. Uh, looks like they're typing something. Yeah, not a lot of action at the moment. Um, so I'll probably end up cutting some of this out. Uh, someone's uh, hammering on their keyboard a little bit. Uh, you can see the, uh, the setup was a little bit more low tech back in the day. Uh, not uh, not as, as uh, fancy and stadiums and soundproof booths and all that sort of stuff as, as they have now. And it seems like, yeah, it looks like there's, there's uh, not an audience. No? Okay, there is an audience. Oh, okay, but there's a setup so the players, at least in theory, can't see the audience. It seems like they, they still might be able to through that little gap. Uh, being able to see audience reactions really gives a player an advantage. I know early on, uh, in, uh, some of the early days of StarCraft, uh, there was uh, some worry that uh, players were able to crowd hack or whatever, uh, get, a, get a read on what the other player was doing from the crowd's reactions. No, I think they pretty much solved that by now, but uh, you can see just looking at this setup uh, and, and the way the, the stadium and the booths were oriented and everything, why that could be a concern. Uh, still just talking. I don't know, we'll see when this game gets started again. And okay, uh, we're back, finally. Um, so, uh, still no idea what that pause was about, but both players still in a fairly standard builds. One thing that's interesting that uh, is different than what we've seen in a modern game is the base architecture here for her, uh, very spread out. Normally, uh, players nowadays tend to cluster their buildings much more closely, partly for defensive purposes, just to have uh, structures that their uh, units can hide behind or move between if they need to micro against early game harassment, partly just for efficiency to make sure that they're uh, using space as efficiently as they can and they put down 15 gateways inside their main area uh, later in the game. But uh, there are advantages to having more spread out base architecture too. It allows your units to move a little bit more freely in and out. And maybe it's just the structure of the map. Maybe there's a little bit more room inside the mains here. I'm not sure. But uh, uh, base architecture is a little bit unusual. You also see players using pylons and things to uh, direct their probes and speed up mining. Uh, a fairly standard wall in there for Elki. That's something I think that was pioneered by Boxer. Boxer was the first player to uh, go for that two supply depot in a barracks wall in early on. 